Well, that was quite a journey into the San Andreas Fault. We've now traveled a mile and a half right into the center line of the fault zone. The San Andreas Fault runs about 700 miles approximately through the continent and 300 miles into the Pacific Ocean. At its narrowest point, it's 200 feet wide. Widest point, it's three and a half miles wide. At this point here, two and a quarter miles wide, and we've got a mile and a half. We're standing right in the center. To my left, you're looking at uplift from the Pacific Plate, and to my right, the North American Plate. They're literally colliding right under us, creating the uplift that we've journeyed into. And as they rise up and press, and the weathering takes place, water and wind opening up, creating a slot that allows us to walk right up between them and be standing in the center line. So let's go inside and check it out. Okay, now out there we're actually in a pretty safe area. Now welcome to the worst possible spot you could be in. We're literally standing right between these two uh, plates, Pacific North American uplift in a slot. And this is continually rising. It's important to understand the plates are colliding at this point and this uplift is continually happening. The plates literally slide about an inch and a half, two inches a year at the present rate. So every 10 years they're moving almost a foot and we're sliding this North American plate, sliding up the western part of the coast area here. And as they rise up and push up, and then the erosion takes place, the wind and the weathering, opening up the slot that we're standing in here. You can feel the sides, it feels nice and solid, but listen, pretty hollow. You can see in a major quake, we had it right now, we'd be in a very, very uh, serious trouble here. Up above us are many, many small rocks, and before we ever felt or heard or saw that uh, earthquake in any form, we'd be showered with small rocks. That tells you it's coming. You don't want to go running out because things will be falling down, so the best thing would be to dive under here. You see, you think this is solid? It's not. You can, it's actually, it's granite, feldspar, gypsum, and quartz ground and ground for millions of years, compressed together, and you can literally break this right off just like that. And Put that on your fireplace mantle and pretend it's a big, nice, fancy rock. Put your name on it, and then when someone comes in, you turn into the incredible hawk. You can turn it to powder in your hands. Fault gouge, and it's just like talcum powder. You would think it would wash away in the flash floods. Not at all. The minute the water touches this, it seals instantly. That's why we have flash floods. You see, the water can't absorb into this soil. Rushing down through the arroyo, down to our valley below, giving us the flash floods. But here, it's fault gouge, and we're standing right in the center of it, constantly rising. And because of the pressure of that, these mountains around us are among the fastest rising mountains in the world today. What you're looking at here is a recreation of a Kauia village called Paltawet. The Kauia lived in this valley two and three thousand years ago. They're the original people of our valley here. They lived in huts like this called Kish. You see there's a hole in the top that allows the heat to rise up and draws cool air in, keeping them quite cool in the summer. They had access to many things here in the valley, such as gourds that could be cut open and used to create bowls or water scoops. And you notice we have water flowing right down into the village off to the side here. That's because we're sitting on the fault line, and wherever there's a crack or a fissure, the water rises up and flows down, giving us access to fresh water as well. The water system you see here cascades down through three different pools. The upper pool here was your cooking and drinking water. Then right down below me here was your bathtub, and down to the uh, lower, lower area was industrial uses, tanning hides and that type of thing. You notice the wonderful plants that are around you. This greenish bush right here, the mesquite, was a great source of nutrition for the Native Americans. Uh, it's called honey mesquite. Tastes just like a honey nut Cheerio. is a great source of protein and used to create their breads. The darker green one you see there is called arrowweed and used to create arrow shafts and spears. So basically everything you see in our desert was alive and edible on the basis of foods and medicines that were used by the Kuya. Another plant of great value to the Kuya was the Washingtonian polyphora. This is the same plant used to make the uh, shell of the uh, kish that you looked at. The Washingtonian polyphora is the only palm that's native to our valley. And the polyphora comes from the fibers you see hanging. This is a great source of material for them, such as your sewing threads. You could easily come in here and pull some of these off of a frond, and you've got your sewing threads. And when you eventually come up with a large group of them, you now have a whole handful of thread. So you have fine threads, but if you want to turn this into something more substantial, such as a rope to build things or basket, you twist them towards you and away from you, and very quickly you will come up with a rope. Simply by twisting the fibers and causing them to bind into each other, you can create a rope. 
And now you've got the beginning of hats, baskets, sandals, whatever you want to make from this, simply using the fibers in the palm. And you can imagine, if I can do this in 30 seconds, the tribe were working on this and the children were gathering fibers and the women working on this here as a project, by the end of the day they'd have yards and yards and yards of really cool rope, just like that using the fibers from the plants. Again, everything is used by the Kuya. They understood the use of every plant in this valley. They were a remarkable group of people, fascinating to what they knew about all the plants we have here. We drive by thinking, oh, it's nothing but scrub brush. Wrong. It's a wonderful, wonderful array of medicinal plants, foods, and fibers to be used for many, many purposes.